everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Resident Evil podcast. And I'm here with Diamond, who is a Resident Evil fan, and uh, yeah, figured I'd have another guest. So, Diamond, why don't you say hello? Hello, people and, listening. And yeah, we're going to be talking about some Resident Evil 7 stuff. We're also going to be talking about some things that I found that actually came out after. Uh, the last episode that I did that came out on Resident Evil 7, stuff that I didn't get a chance to talk about. So this episode will also give us a chance to talk about some news that they came out and talked about in the, uh, I think it was the E3 interviews that they mm-hmm. had after it was announced. And they came out and said, so we could talk about uh, some of the stuff like that. So yeah, why don't you tell everybody your like how you got introduced to the series? Okay, so I've been into Resident Evil for man probably like 13 years um i started out like watching my mom basically play it like on the gamecube oh wow that's awesome and um i was just too young and too frail to try it myself but um eventually resident evil 5 came out and it resident evil 5 obviously wasn't as scary or creepy as um the earlier versions so um it was pretty easy to just like get straight into that and just play it and i maxed out the thing in in uh xbox and everything and then after resident evil 5 i just kind of went backwards it was like then i uh did resident evil 4 and then um i was going on to like uh like the remake resident evil 1 and oh yeah um but i never really got too much into resident evil 1 because it still freaks me out <laughs> but <laughs> but i uh i've played like the ones that came out yeah the ones that came out for the wii um of course, Resident Evil Six, um, basically all the, the little side side ones that were released and yeah, all like the that. spinoffs and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh, like I, I mentioned before we uh, started recording that, like that's how Richard uh, got my co-host got into the Resident Evil games. He kind of went backwards. So a lot of people ended up finding mm-hmm. out about them on, I guess, uh, <clears throat> newer generation of consoles because when they were yeah. like, released. You know, it was just like strictly PlayStation and then it was only on PlayStation. Then they were like, well, we're going to do a Nintendo exclusive. So then they had a run on Nintendo. So Resident Evil always had a strange like series of of being exclusive to certain consoles. Like it was only on Xbox, like by the time five came out. So it was like the latest, uh, like probably. Yeah, it was the only game that was on Xbox up to that point was five. And then it was on Xbox and PS. It was then it was on everything. Now yeah. they don't even make them for Nintendo anymore because Nintendo lost all third party support. So they just have their main games like Mario and so, so they don't can't they can't even do that. Like they can't even put Resident Evil on. It's just strictly Sony and Microsoft now. Oh wow, yeah. But um but yeah, that that's really cool. Yeah. So like um with now like you haven't played the Resident Evil 7 demo because well, it's kind of hard to play anyway because it's only on PS4. So a lot of people that yeah. Uh, listen to the show. So all you guys listening uh, or that leave comments, some of you guys haven't even played it yet. And I was on the uh, Crimson Elder podcast and the uh, the main host uh, didn't play it either. So a lot of people are forming opinions by watching videos, watching uh, streams, watching all that. And that's what you have done. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess you could just kind of give your overall impressions because you know how Resident Evil has been, uh, especially yes. with its fixed camera angles. Then we had the behind the back so I think it'll be cool to get your perspective on kind of just what you think from whether you saw the trailer first or the gameplay and seeing that whole first person kind of different character aspect. Right, right, right. All right. So I think what made the original Resident Evils like one, two and three just so creepy was the fact that um, your perspective you're, yeah. you, you have like a fixed camera uh, perspective and you have to basically move accordingly. And most of the time that's like r- really difficult at first because oh, yeah. you're like pushing the, the pad one way and you're moving the other way. It's like so, tank controls, cr- which is what people call them. They call them like tank controls, like, mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So it makes it like, oh, my God, like I'm moving the wrong way and I'm trying to dodge this. And obviously it makes it a little more panicky. So... Um, then with the third person, it's a little little easier because it's, you're just right behind your character. You know where you're going, wherever you push the, the pad or, um, the stick, whatever. So with the first person, I think it still brings back that creepy element because you don't see your character. You don't really know what's, it, it blocks out the peripherals. Yeah. 
basically. Definitely. So it's like you're only seeing what's in front of you. And that might not be super realistic because, of course, the peripherals, we can see what's coming from the left and the right. But it's still, it blocks that out. So it's like whatever's right in front of you, that's all you see. And it just makes it that much creepier. So I, I like that aspect. I mean, it's not super Resident Evil, obviously. It's not that element that everyone knows. But yeah, exactly. I think it definitely, it, it's like this is something new. And it still brings that creepiness back to the series. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, like I, I, I was telling this to um, a few of my friends too. I was just thinking like how many times can we see behind the back? Kind of like how many times could we see fixed camera angles, but then people ended up missing it. Um, and it's like you try to get this behind the back perspective and it made sense because a Resident Evil 4, like if we if we go through all the ones that started with that, uh, mm -hmm. probably disregarding the, the spinoffs because they were more of the same as far as the camera perspective. But with Resident Evil 4, it was very different because not only did we have <clears throat> behind the back, but we also had a new inventory system. We had a yeah. new new weapon upgrades. We had everything. Mm -hmm. So it feels like with them trying to bring this first person approach, which a lot of people are very skeptical about, a lot of people wanted them to go back to fixed camera angles, but they were like, well, let's just try to do this whole first person thing and see how it happens, like see how people will like it. And so with also bringing that new gameplay and it, it seems like they're trying to bring in um, kind of like well, what you were mentioning with uh, you know all the kind of perspectives that they were going through. I feel like now with this, they're trying like, all right, well, we're going to bring in this first person, but we're also going to bring in all these new characters and all these yeah. new mechanics and combat yes. inventory. Right. And so, so like, how did you feel about the uh, like how it played? Because clearly, there's a lot more psychological stuff in here. It's a lot more dark. It's it's creepy. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can explain kind of your thoughts on seeing it kind of go back to its roots as far as trying to be a little bit more gritty, a lot more um, in your face than action oriented. Right. So I think, um, I think it was the early, really early like um, gameplay or something of Resident Evil 4. And it had like, it, it was very, it's, it was much more like supernatural. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So I remember seeing that. So it kind of it kind of reminded me of that. Like they were trying to go that route, not supernatural necessarily, but more like um, things are popping up. At it was like the you. dolls were falling and moving, yeah, like, like the yeah, hook man yeah, out of the painting. <laughs> yeah. and, and that just like immediately reminded me, like the mannequin thing that happened. Yeah. In, in the demo, like immediately reminded me of like the creepy little baby dolls in. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. In that gameplay, so um, I think. I don't know. It's it's. I think it's. It just shows like a, like a grittiness. Like um. The the newer Resident Evils four, five, and six, are obviously a lot more action packed. But um, it kind of what what Resident Evil Seven brings. It kind of reminds me of like a like a Walking Dead type of thing. It kind of shows, um, versus rather than showing the people like trying to stop the bad guys you're tr you're like showing the people that are living in that are going through what's happening like this outbreak or whatever so it's very it's very real it's very like you said very gritty yeah so i don't know i i just i don't know i just like it like it's a different perspective it's a different type of resident evil even though yeah it's very refreshing yeah, yeah it, it's very different. It's a breath of fresh air. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, because like with like, you know, like what you said, like we're actually being a part of it, and I feel like because the way they wanted to introduce it uh, was like, well, you know, this is what this is what what's going to happen, and then we don't know when we actually play the game, which again is like six months away, six seven mm -hmm. months away. You know, we're going to be seeing what happens after that or we're going to be seeing maybe like okay like somebody hears about the reports of the murders in the in the house or right. they or people go missing so uh, i think you're right they're trying to make it very uh different as far as we're kind of seeing it from a victim's perspective right and whether or not they're still going to be alive but then in the beginning of the demo when we started up we see them like tied into a chair trying to get you out 
So I think that takes place after the demo. That that was what I think. But there's a lot of theories. There is theories that this takes place before the first one in the Arclay Mountains, and then there's theories that this sets it up like before and then after. There's a lot of things that people are saying that like leads to um, a potential story. Uh, so I mm-hmm. think the the avenues are just wide open as far as stuff we can do and. And I ask people, you know, what's really wrong with that? You know, I mean, like, and, and that's the thing. Yeah. People have their opinions. Like I said, there's people that listen to this that might not like it for what it is. And, and it's perfectly fine. But, um, you know, everybody has their own opinions. And I, and I appreciate a brand new perspective, you know, when I see one, especially after Resident Evil has been in a little slump over the past few years. People mm-hmm. had a bad taste in their mouth after six and they really don't want them yeah. to drop the ball. So. I see both sides of the argument, but Definitely. at the same time, I think I think people should really try to um, at least try to play the demo. And hey, if you're fixed on an opinion, you don't want to play it, that's fine. Nobody's forcing you to. Capcom, it, you know, if they come out with Revelations three and it's behind the back, then just stick to the Revelation series. You know, they mm-hmm. they just came out with Umbrella Core today, which I've been playing, and it's very it's just online only action shooter. You want to play mm-hmm. that? You can play that. So there's different, and that's what a lot of uh, my comments have been saying is that the people that have been sticking up for the people that like this this whole uh, new Resident Evil is that there's a lot of other games that you can play too if you don't right. really like this one. Exactly. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. So with with that like being said, now Resident Evil Seven, uh, since it's already come, now we also have people that think that now do you, are you familiar with PT? And Silent Hills and that whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, PT it has been a thing that, and I've been getting comments about this, and that's why I'll, I'll also address it. And apparently, what I learned after I recorded my last episode was that uh, Capcom was saying, "Well, this was in, this has been in development for a while, uh, for before PT or Silent Hills or whatever." Now, I think that at the end of the day, they are clearly going to be, you know, uh, they're going to be influenced by this. I feel like because PT was a, you know, interactive demo or whatever, playable teaser, and that's what it stood for. People were just like, well, this is because PT now. This is kind of like a ripoff and stuff. But I think, like, at the end of the day, you know, people are going to have their opinions uh, and say what came first. And I say it doesn't matter. If Capcom has an influence on... PT or first person horror games, then that's fine. I mean, because now it's like I get it. They're the originators of the series and I get it like they shouldn't be having influence. But they look at this as this is what people like right now. And this is Mm -hmm. what we should do. And, you know, Silent Hills wasn't going to be first person. The playable teaser was just first person. Now this game is going to be first person. So I don't. You know, there was nothing wrong with PT. Everybody praised it. I liked it a lot, too. And then it's a shame that, you know, it turned into Silent Hills, which was canceled and Kojima went his other way. But I think like nowadays people just kind of look at that and are like, well, they just copied it and stuff. And now, you know, it came there. It was either in development during or before. But at the end of the day, whatever that answer may be, it, it might not be, you know, it just could be they just started making it. And I definitely think they took influence to release a teaser like this from mm-hmm. PT. And that's mm-hmm. perfectly fine. Um, however, I, uh, I I think that with with how PT is, I think like people should just try to appreciate how people are kind of taking influence from one another. And hopefully it makes it its own. I don't think it's a blatant ripoff. We didn't play the whole game yet. And Silent right. Hills never even came out, so we can never even say it was a ripoff of Silent Hills because it was canceled. So the game's not even out yet, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, no, I agree. I think people are so fixated on, like, comparing it to something else or another game. or And it's just like, just appreciate it for what it is. Like, just take it as yeah. a, just a Resident Evil title and just go from there. Like It has similar elements, to- you know? Yeah. Um, like another game that was actually introduced at E3, it was called um, We Happy Few. I don't remember if I don't know if you remember, but I, don't, I, I think I heard of it. I don't think I've I've looked anything up on it though. Right. So it it had like the style of the um, art was very very much, and I thought it was a Bioshock game at first too, but it was very similar to like the Bioshock look, and it was just like that retro steampunk type of look. Oh, okay. And, 
and all the comments I see on it on YouTube is just like, oh my god, this is just a ripoff of Bioshock. Da, 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 da. But it's like, just just don't even worry about that because they might have been influenced, but it's like, just take it for what it is. Just like, just um, criticize the game for the game itself rather than, okay, this is a ripoff of this. Because it's not. It's not even. Yeah, it's like if so you play the game and it's like Bioshock and it's literally, it's like a copycat, yeah, then yeah, say, exactly. it's, say it's a ripoff, you know? Exactly, but... Resident Evil, Resident Evil Seven, comparing it to Silent Hills and the PT, it's just like, oh, you you guys are really reaching, you're really reaching. Yeah, it, it's like it's like you know, I, I could see how I de- they definitely took influence in the whole trailer thing. Yeah, uh, but definitely. I think influence and ripping off is a different thing. Like every mm-hmm. musician that we listen to is influenced by another artist. Every movie that we've seen, writers and directors are influenced by each other or something they've seen before so there's nothing wrong even youtubers are influenced by other people that they've seen so i think it's important to recognize that like i understand when people say like you know it oh this kind of reminds me of pt and like yeah i I thought about it too but i wasn't Mm -hmm. like well this is just like like fuck this because of whatever you know (laughs) like right right exactly uh, you know in my opinion i think that they they're doing the right thing. They're trying to release it and say, all right, what do you think? Now, I, like I said, I think the marketing for this could have been a little bit better. They could have been like, well, everybody can play it now. But I know they have like a thing with Sony and the whole Sony VR thing. And apparently there is a lot of reports of people like saying that this is like really good in VR. And then there's also people saying that this is getting them. It's actually getting them sick while playing VR and that Capcom has to fix it before the game comes out, which oh, wow. I think is pretty crazy because <laughs> How do you, what is your opinion on the whole VR or Oculus Rift and stuff that you've seen on that? What is your opinion? Because I do think it's a little gimmicky, but at the same time, I feel like if the price drops, I think it would be kind of cool, but I don't know like um, if you've seen or Mm -hmm. anything on it, but uh, it's pretty popular now in in the market. So I I don't, I want to know your thoughts on that. I, I think it's, um, amazing (laughs) i think it's like that's a like a crazy step in we are taking that step like we are taking i can't i really can't believe it either (laughs) it's like it's like wow it's 2016 like we were talking about this five years ago and now it's like a reality like it's actually a thing like it's a selling point yeah yeah so i think it's amazing that it's being done and all of the stuff coming out for it and um but it they're they're like they're definitely like sold separately too, though, like right. Like you can yeah, get just yes. the VR version. You can get just the regular game. Yeah, version. if you if you have like the thing is the game. What any copy of the game you get will support the VR. If you just oh, okay. like, if I so if I pick it up and then a year later I'm like oh the VR dropped. Let me buy it and replay Resident Evil with the VR. Mm-hmm. I can do that. You know, it oh, just okay. supports it. You don't you don't need it. And a lot of people were scared about that. They were like, well, what if they you know have this uh title and it's just really to pump out the vrs and to be like oh you know here we go like sit, trying to sell it make profit um, and stuff you know yeah okay i can see i can see their concern yeah um i guess especially since the the console version is is a first person it can make you feel that way yeah but i don't know i still feel like there's separate entities like what's in the VR might not necessarily be what's in the console game or what vice versa. Like I saw that, um, final fantasy 15 was also like console version and VR. And they were obviously like pretty different, like not only the perspective, but it was just like the gameplay and whatnot was pretty different. So I feel like it'll take that turn. It'll be like, you know, the VR was just going to be a separate entity from the console version. And I'm sure that was their intentions. They were probably like, well, you know, VR is going to be in these new because, you know, they're all re- Sony's re-releasing a PS4. They're making a new, ver- you know, Xbox already announced it's like three consoles. So it's like, you know, everybody, <laughs> right. everybody's like, you know, just these consoles are underpowered. And I hate I hate that. I'm not going to buy another PS4 that supports mm-hmm. VR or yeah. if these games already support VR and there's just going to be an update for my PS4. But it's like yeah. these consoles are three years old and we're already getting updates because they can't even handle 60 frames per second, 1080p full resolution, which is like Mm -hmm. a joke. Um, and and so, but yeah, like I, I think like, um, I do think it's, it's a good, it's a great thing that they're, uh, that games are making this jump. I do Mm -hmm. feel like, like I said, it is a little pricey. I forget the price of it, but I remember it just being pretty, 
pretty high. And like, I understand the technology is pretty expensive. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not um, you know. the VR, right? So yeah, the PS, um, the PlayStation VR was, I think it was, it was near 400. It was like 399. I'm pretty sure. So it's sure. like another, it's like another console. Adapter. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And it's even more than another console because I mean, you could get a PS4 for probably like what? 300, 350 right now. Uh, I, yeah. I think it's probably like, less. I think retail, I think it might be. 350 or might even drop to 300. I'm not sure. Like, there's always like deals. It's always going down. Yeah. Up, buy this, trade in this to get this. Like, there's right. always different stuff. There's to, always uh, something. But, yeah. I mean, I was looking at, looking at the price, and even though obviously it is pretty pricey, like you're probably not gonna drop 400 like in a minute mm. doing that. But, but I was also looking at it. I'm like, wow. Like, I would, you know, the technology, like. I would think that'd be even more. Like I'm look thinking like immediately I'm thinking like, oh my God, there's like eight hundred dollars. Like Oh, I thought the like, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it I mean, it's like it's it just has to be it just depends on the person. Like if it's worth it to you, go ahead. Like, I'm not gonna knock you for it. But yeah. some people it's just not worth it, you know, whatever, it's each his own. Yeah, and, and you're and especially if like you are gonna be like if uh if, if somebody out there listening is gonna be playing Resident Evil 7, then it's like you're going to if you already have it and you already know you're going to enjoy it, then I mean, by all means, play it. And mm -hmm. hell, let me uh, anybody out there, let me know how it is. If you if <laughs> any of you guys pick up that VR, because I right. mean, like, I'd like to hear how it might actually it could make it either even better. It could make it worse. Yeah. I have no idea. Like I exactly. it's it's like messing. Not you're not only messing with a new kind of kind of game like gameplay mechanics for Resident Evil, but you're also having this new technology thrown underneath mm -hmm. it and being like well this is kind of like our selling point of a vr like this and because you know if it was if it was something like you said they were doing for final fantasy which is like that's mm -hmm. that's crazy because that's yeah. normally like a, that's not even first person you know what i mean so it's right, like exactly they're so doing that, it for anything that, yeah. it makes it like a totally different game yeah definitely yeah and and then you're and then you're kind of you're thrown into the it feels like you're in it so it's like yeah it's a horror game and then like you know and then Final Fantasy is a different kind of game. So it's like they're trying to just make this kind of uh, a stamp on, you know, because PC, you obviously can do the Oculus stuff. And I'm sure you could probably use that for like if Resident because Resident Evil is coming out on PC as well. So that means mm -hmm. if you have like an Oculus, then you could be like, oh, like I can, you know, I can use that for if it's on Steam support or mm -hmm. anything like that or PC whatever they're going to be putting it on, um, they'll probably make it able to do that. I don't know if they'll do it right away because I guess Sony has a, a right. license with them where it's like, hey, you know, we're going to sell it on the PS4, but we're also going to, you know, it's on, it's on the Xbox One, but they didn't even mention anything about virtual reality on that yeah, console. Yeah, so, right, exactly. Yeah, so I'm very excited to see uh, what they do, especially with that, uh, just to kind of see it from other perspectives. Like I said, I don't think I'll be buying it right away. Uh, mm -hmm. I probably wait like a while until I buy it, maybe like a year or two before probably. like I even consider it. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as like the game is concerned, now I I also found this out too. Now this was um, now I I had what uh, I had a, a few people actually. Um, mentioned to me that now at now there was a test uh, game a while uh, I, I don't know if it was a while ago but it was like apparently this was Resident Evil 7 and they just it was a horror game testing the Oculus and it was called Kitchen and in the trailer or in like the thing or oh. when you start it up it says before Kitchen yeah. and yeah. Uh, that apparently it's been confirmed by uh, inside people that actually t played the game uh, that this was Resident Evil 7 and it was oh. testing like the waters on like seeing how people responded to it. Wow. Uh, and it was apparently positive and that is kind of like they were like, okay. And then they kind of just took it from there. And uh, yeah, apparently it was very similar. It had the same kind of uh, hat one house kind of deal. Um, and uh, Capcom hasn't said like, yeah, that was that. But like it's pretty much well confirmed. There's enough like. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense uh, that it's it's that. And uh, there was apparently just it was kind of just testing the waters. And then they came out and were like, all right, well, now we're going to announce, you know, Resident Evil 7. They're going to do it okay. anyway. Yeah. But it's really interesting to kind of see the uh, the seed that was planted as far as like, all right, we're going to try to to do this. Now, I want to know what you think. Now, I don't know if you played any games like uh, like 
uh, Outlast or Amnesia or I know you know of those games, I'm sure, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. as far as it being first person and not not being able to fight back. Uh, mm-hmm. This was a fear that a lot of people and I had and I still kind of have as as far as not knowing with Resident Evil 7 of them making it. Now, they, they said combat was confirmed. They, they confirmed mm-hmm. that much. And they also said that the characters in the game are going to be new, there's all, but there's going to be cameos of characters that we already know. So that mm-hmm. it, that's something that I found out after the last episode that people listening might want to know. So the way I feel about it is I think that if I played a Resident Evil game and I'm just running and hiding, that would not really go over no. well for me. Right, yeah. I feel like you have to have some kind of combat system, some kind of, uh, you know, just some kind of fighting. Because I understand, like, they came out and they said, like, you know, you're, you're we don't have boulder punching heroes anymore, which is referring to Chris and Ari Fox <laughs> when he punched the boulder, which I thought was kind of cool. Kind of ridiculous. Know, you know, <laughs> Chris was awesome. But, um, but the thing is, is like, you know, they're trying to make it so... It's realistic and I get it. You're yeah. not going to have an artillery. Like if you're if you play an investigator or you, if you play like some kind of agent that isn't equipped for the situation, it does make you more vulnerable. Mm-hmm. I feel like they but they should definitely imp, like implement a lot of combat at least to still make it like you can fight back. Like I don't want to be running from monsters and hiding and like I just feel like that's not Resident Evil. Now for a new like IP, like for its own thing, like Amnesia that's a so yeah. plain, like it can do its thing. Outlast, all you had was the camera and the batteries mm-hmm. for the camera. Right. And uh, Alien Isolation, which I actually love. You can't, you could fight back. Like you pick up flares and you could throw them as distractions. You can pick up a flamethrower and, and shoot at the alien to like scare it away. But you can never kill what's chasing you in that game. You just can hide and you're, you're very vulnerable. Now it does make it scary. And I just I, my only fear is I don't want them to kind of use that influence and bring it into this game where it's like just right. no combat at all. Like, I don't know how you feel about that, like not being able to fight back mm-hmm. or if you think you might think that could work. I don't know. I just want to hear your thoughts. I think that not fighting back is very on Resident Evil, like even in um, even in spinoff games. I mean, that um, that we've had, it's just it's always been the battle, the combat, like. Even if it's not um, combat, like, okay, I'm going to throw a punch and, like, kick around you and then, like, crazy. But we still had weapons. We still had guns. We still had everything. I feel like they're – I really wouldn't think that they would take that element out because it just seems kind of ridiculous. Like, really just going to run around, like, with our camera, the whole, you know, the whole puzzles and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like – Cause I the the way the thing that always like scared me when I played Resident Evil was not having enough ammo, you know. So you would have the ammo, and then you would also, you know, kind of be like, "Well, damn!" You would go in the safe room, look at your item box, and then just kind of be like, "Oh, damn! I don't have enough ammo for." Or how am I going to do this? Or how that was the scary that that's that was the level right. of scary of scary elements that I thought it wasn't necessarily like because re- if you look back. On the other Resident Evils, like they were like they just jump scares most of the time. But mm-hmm. the the things that creeped me out were like the BOWs that chased you or yes. Nemesis and Resident Evil 3. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think like, you know, I think they know and they, they confirmed combat. Uh, they did. But the thing is, it's like how much combat we don't know. Are you going to get guns? Or are you just going to get an mm-hmm. axe? Are you going to get like stuff to throw at enemies? Like, I don't even know what the hell we're going to be fighting most of the time. Is it going to be ghosts? Is it going to be like just these uh these creatures uh something now because we in the demo we saw that there is an umbrella logo on a helicopter so Mm -hmm. that that confirms that umbrella is somewhere around this game so that means Mm -hmm. i want my i want my mansion and i want my underground lab (laughs) i want those things but uh i mean they don't have to be in there because like i know they're trying to make a little bit more realistic but i i think it's cool that it's still in the Resident Evil universe. A lot of people forget that we also have Resident Evil Vendetta, which is the animated film. Now, mm-hmm. before four and no, before five and six, we got uh, Degeneration and Damnation, which are the yeah. animated films. Yep. Which uh, are which are canon and connect to the game. So mm-hmm. this one has Leon in it again, and so I think a lot of people are forgetting that like that is also coming out. So I think that might be like not that it's going to be connected 
with characters per se, but that could set up a potential story of right. like finding out Umbrella or somebody still trying to run this Umbrella. Because I felt like Simmons and RE6 was like a joke. Like I thought that was like that whole Neo yeah. Umbrella thing was like, yeah. I was not for that. I felt that was really forced. And the whole sea virus yeah, thing was kind of like, yeah. how can we get an outbreak worldwide? Or let's, I mean, like the fact that it was worldwide was a different approach. Like I thought, like I'm working on a Resident Evil 6 review right now. It's almost mm-hmm. done. Like I'm finally getting a constructed like review after all these years. And um, I, I think like looking back and replaying it, um, you know, because it already came out in 2012, so it's already been a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that came out. Well, yeah, we're still in high school. So yeah. that was like um, that was one of those things where I thought that with the story, it's just like. Where else are you going to go with the story? I was wondering myself because I was like, you can't really continue it. Yeah, exactly. Like it was like the the peak. Like it was like, where else are you going to go? Okay, I agree. Yeah, the peak you, is a good way to 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 put it. You, yeah, you brought back Umbrella. You put you know Ada in the mix there. Like now she's this and that, and then it's just like you put all these other characters in there, and you brought back a character or two, and then it's just like what? Okay, what? What else could you possibly yeah, do? It's like, like, wow, you guys literally <laughs> threw everything at the wall. Yeah, it, it kind of yeah. felt, it kind of felt a little ridiculous, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it was. To be it, honest, it was, it was, that's the one thing about the game was that it was it was very packed and just the kind of like a lot going on. So you yeah. have like a lot of these people saying, "Well, we want it, you know, to go back. We want it to go back," and then they finally do it, and people hate it, or either they hate it or they like just it. So totally critical of it, like yeah. so bad. <laughs> but it's it's like I feel like a lot of the people, uh, and I and I try to ask this question a lot to other people, and it's just like a lot of people just hate the first person. If this was like, you know, if this was behind the back, and it was in this setting. Or if it was any or even fixed camera angles per se, because now I thought that they were going to do fixed camera angles because of the response to Resident Evil uh, remake, because when that was remastered and everybody bought it and Mm -hmm. I played the fuck out of that game again and again, uh, it was people it showed that people still had an interest for that. And it did resonate with them. A lot of people were like, oh, they didn't listen. They didn't. It's like they oh, they listen. They just wanted to also bring they listen, but they also brought yeah. something else to it and not and they didn't make it. Uh, they just didn't make it uh, fixed camera angles or the third person. Now, Resident Evil 2 remake, that's probably going to be fixed or it could be behind the back. But people will complain about that, too. Yeah, if it's behind the back, some I, I, I think everyone will just be like, oh, why? Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I want the fixed camera. Was, I even said oh, yeah. the remake uh, two thoughts video that I made like a year ago when they confirmed mm-hmm. it. I was like, please do fixed camera angles. But yeah, so there's like a lot of speculation with that. There's some people that just say, fuck it. I want my Resident Evil 2 remake, whatever. Like they don't even give a shit about this, you know, entry in the series. And that's fine. <sighs> You know, yes. like I, it, I just feel like those people will end up being the people that complain anyway. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's some people I mean, or they could be the people that just didn't like the series since four or five because mm-hmm. like there's people that yeah, don't exactly. like it. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that don't like four um, still. And I think the uh, response to this is similar to four as four is a completely different idea, different concepts, uh, different style of gameplay completely that's how re4 was because like Mm -hmm. devil may cry was originally going to be a resident evil title but it was way too different and then they're like all right let's make this its own let's own game yeah so if people just in life people just can't accept change sometimes and it's really hard Mm -hmm. to you know (laughs) it's really hard to for people to like accept it and maybe it might take it might maybe it might uh grow on people that's why I I try to stay stay open to a lot of naysayers and a lot of people that because mm-hmm. I'm just like hey you know what I believe that if you give it enough thought or maybe even if you play it you might be swayed and just be like hey you know what this is actually pretty solid because if it comes out and it's just a stellar game people love it it's just like how does it make them look just a bunch of crap yeah. you know what I mean yeah <laughs> exactly it's like you can't accept change or you can't keep an open mind it's all about thinking for yourself keeping an open mind try not to bandwagon jump per se Mm -hmm. and uh and all that stuff so like you know because what what were some of the comments that you've seen because uh i I remember that was one of the first things you brought to my attention was uh the uh kind of the backlash of stuff i don't know if you saw it on facebook or youtube there's different forms of where you can find people uh constantly bashing right ready 
Yeah, I, I definitely saw a lot of it on YouTube, of course, like looking at the trailers and um, uh, the demos, um, the versions of the demos and all, all yeah, that yeah. stuff. It's just, it, it was just a bunch of, it was really, what I saw was just a bunch of like comparing it to like um, Silent Hill and all of these other games and like, why does this look like this? Or like, um, I remember seeing um, about, oh my God, this is going to just, just overall bashing, just like, this is going to be such a bad game. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, okay, are you guys forgetting that this month, this uh, game is like six to seven months away? Like what we see here might not even, it, I think they already confirmed that it's not going to be in the game. It's kind of like, yeah, it's an introduction like a blog, like mm-hmm. type thing. So it's like, we might not even see these characters again. Like this might not even be like, it might be mentioned, but it, we might not even like have this, this, we might even be in the setting or anything like that. So it's yeah, just we, like, we don't know. It's, it, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, people who took uh, screenshots of the trailer have seen different things of different locations, like the woods and a ranch house and all this stuff. So it's like there, the, that that's the thing. Cause I've seen cause that's the thing I've seen the like usually with how Resident Evil six was the contrast between the positive and the negative. The negative was just like it was overwhelming. The uh, mm-hmm. the the response to this has definitely been divided where because if you go on the video, you don't n- notice how the likes and the dislikes like the, there's a lot more likes like people mm-hmm. are more people are for this, I feel like. But I feel like it's also almost a 50 50 because I keep seeing back and forth, back and forth like. You know, oh, yeah, because definitely. people people are like impatient or they're anxious. And I understand that because I'm the same way as far as like trying to see a new uh, title. I, I want my hands on it. Like I want to play it. If I could play it right now, I would like it's just one of those things. Like mm-hmm. I really want to dive into it and see if it's a good story. At the end of the day, people get caught up in the whole first person thing. But it's like, but what about the story? What if it's a kick ass story? What if yeah, it like ties exactly. awesome stuff in there? Like what what was um. Out of all the Resident Evils you played, what was your, probably your favorite? Oh, man. Um, so I've played... All right. So I've played basically all of them, including the, like, the, you know, the corny little side ones that nobody really wants to talk about. Yeah. Um, besides, of course, like, Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 2, and 3, because 2 and 3 obviously have not been, like, remade, remastered. So, yeah, they were just know, ported yet. a million times on... Yeah, they're just, like, yeah. PlayStation titles, and I've never had a PlayStation, so... But, um, and I never played uh, 0 or um, 1, and I don't know if you even want to count Survivor, whatever, uh... there's that too. <laughs> Oh, so nobody really wants to talk to about that one like ever. It's so funny. Survivor, <laughs> Survivor <laughs> is a podcast on its own. Uh, Survivor is something I want to <laughs> actually do. I want to do like a, a kind of a let's play on like I want to record it all. And then I kind of I want to like do a post commentary with my mm-hmm. f- my friend Richard on it because it's one of those games. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> it's like it's not even like it's not even I don't even think it's it's canon some people think it's can some people stick up for a lot of stuff they think it's canon whether it is or not it's survivors is one of those funny games where it's like you don't have to play but yeah it was yeah. just a bad time because what happened with <laughs> that was that they tried to do this like well you can use because dead aim was a successor to that it was a sequel and dead aim was like mm-hmm. for ps2 yeah and dead aim 2 yeah that, one. that was like where it's third person but when you aim it's first person so yeah but Survivor was like all first person and they did it so like they tried to make it so you can use like an arcade gun. But what mm-hmm. happened was Columbine happened and everybody was freaking out about yeah. the whole uh, arcade gun thing. So they had to pull it in America. So in Japan, mm-hmm. they got the they got the gun support mm-hmm. and we didn't. So the only way to play that game the way it was meant to be played is number one, you have to have a tube TV because they don't really translate well on HD TVs apparently. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, so that, mm-hmm. that would actually be fun to play it like that one day. But yeah, Survivor is just one of those things. But go on what you were saying. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. But um, so I played basically all of them besides the super original ones, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure those most of those are like relics. But um. Oh my god, my favorite, if I'm going to be totally, totally honest, my favorite has to be uh, Resident Evil 4. 
I'm oh, just, nice. I'm just gonna say it. Like, nice. I mean, it. no, you're not alone. There's <laughs> a lot of people that love four. Uh, as like people that there's like I said, there's people that listen to this that started with that game, uh, mm-hmm. and that's why it's their favorite. Or it's also because out of the the newer trilogy, that is the one that is. Yes. Still, rel- kind of, it still has some scary elements. I mean, those regenerators yeah. are fucking creepy. Oh, God, <laughs> I needed those things. Oh my God, I didn't know how I was gonna get past them when I finally got to them. Because mem- remember, like I watched my mom play it, so like oh, I'm yeah. watching and I'm like, okay, like I'm not gonna be in the room while you do all this. Like I'm gonna go. <laughs> so when I actually got to it, and like I'm like, okay, you got this diamond. Like you're gonna take them on. But... You gotta get their shoot their parasites with the. Uh... <laughs> With the scope or whatever, because that's yeah, the it's yeah. yeah, it's like that. See, the thing is with Resident Evil Four is that was, um, you know, because some people say, you know, with the change of gameplay, that that didn't have kind of a a, uh, I guess, a scary element. But I think the the whole being alone, because like Ashley was yeah. like. Ashley, Ashley was oh there, God. but she Ashley did. Ashley has her own podcast too. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that that is another pod. The Ashley podcast. Yeah, oh we just God. roast Ashley over and over again. <laughs> um, the thing is, it's like that is I I still felt very like alone, you know, yeah. in that game because uh, like yeah. I said, she was with you, but she couldn't help you. Like Sheva and Five helped you a lot. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and she had her own arsenal, and you can upgrade her stuff, and it was co-op. So you're that's when like the game took a little turn where I was like, all right, let's. And you know, five is getting remastered on the PS4, and I'm actually going to pick it up next week and just play it like all over again because I mm-hmm. love that game so much. Mm-hmm. So many hours into that game, and four, oh, I yeah, like too. four. <laughs> I I lost out. I lost how many times I beat four. Like, I lost count. It's just mm-hmm. four is. Four is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, three is probably my favorite Resident Evil, uh, but it is my favorite Resident Evil because that's just when I was a kid. That w- like when I was literally like four or five years old, that's like what I would play. Like I wa- would watch my dad like mm-hmm. try to run away from Nemesis, and I would just watch him get like freaked out, and I would just love. <laughs> I would love every second of it because uh, right. I just I don't know. I always liked horror games when I was a kid, and then that's when because he owned all of them for PlayStation, and he had the strategy guides and everything, and I would play them too before like before preschool or kindergarten i was too young <laughs> but I, <laughs> well, my dad didn't care because like he just like it was a video game like he never yeah cared. yeah um, same, same. And, and also with Di- with dino crisis that was another one where oh yeah 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 definitely that was a great game i want to do a let's play on that still one day or stream it but there um yeah there's like the you know with resident evil 4 I remember when I played that, I didn't know how to feel at first because I was like, wow, this is very different. But then as I play it, I'm just like, this just has an addicting setup. And uh, the fact that it's your favorite doesn't surprise me because like that's just it's just a well-made game. I mean, everybody yeah. knows RE4. That game mm-hmm. broke records when it came yes, out. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. 100 percent. I just feel like the game was just art by itself. It was just art. Like, yeah, it was. There were so many. And I just people not want to knock like you know all of the uh certain gameplay elements like the way you know behind the back um they want to knock uh the the what is it the firing the the shooting you know yeah gameplay. The they want to mechanics knock, yeah yeah they want to knock um the inventory and things like that but it's just like when you really sit there and you really paint it's just it's just amazing. Like I, I still feel like I'm playing a Resident Evil game when I'm playing Resident Evil Four. It's not like, um, if we compare it to like, oh, I guess like maybe RE Five, where it's kind of like, um, it's like daytime most of the time. Yeah, and it's, it's a different like environment. It, you yeah. kind of feel like it's a little more um, relaxed, not in like an action like the way it's playing, but like a little more like at ease when you're playing because you're like oh it's daytime like what's gonna scare me really honestly yeah yeah but but there were so many elements of resident evil 4 that were just very creepy and then you just pay attention to the the characters themselves like the um i totally forget his name right now but the little dude salazar (laughs) yeah there we go there we go salazar and you're just like okay like when you really think about this guy like he's like a freaking weirdo like He's just like this little midget dude. You're like, just like where? Like, really yeah, you're, you're just like where did he come from? Like, like, what? What are you? But all of these other, it just still felt very Resident Evil to me. It was very freaky. It was very creepy. You look at the monsters. You look at all these oh, things that yeah, they introduced. It's still very like 
wow, like what is happening? And it was in like it was in Spain. It was a different setting. It was oh, like yeah. ver mm -hmm. very it was very dark at sometimes, and then it was just like you're you going. Started out in just like this very quiet, solemn, like creepy, like oh my god, I'm in the woods, and like yeah. there's a church at the th at the top of the hill, and that's ringing, and like I'm in this cabin, like what's going? You start out just yeah. like it's just in a freaky environment, period, and it's, I think it just gets freakier and weirder and creepier as you go on yeah like the the thing is with like what they did back like you know when like when that game came out what i what i really appreciated about it was the fact that they tried to give it a balance because you also had the merchant um who also mm -hmm. let you upgrade stuff so that was kind of a cool feature where you have to like get money and like kind of uh, mm -hmm. save it and then you can sell stuff Mm -hmm. uh, and, and everything like that. So it was kind of like one of those things, like I thought they, they did a great job with a balance of like making it new and then making it. Yeah. I feel yeah. like it had a lot of, um, replay value. Like, Oh, it did. You can oh, definitely yeah. beat the game and then you would totally feel inclined to like start it over again because now you're thinking about, Oh, I could have killed this thing this way. Let me buy this gun. Let me make sure I have enough money to buy this yeah. or like da, 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 all that type of stuff. So I, I don't know. It was just, it's just awesome game it, to me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Like, that's that's why people adore it because it's just like... And it started a foundation of third-person shooters because shortly after that, you had, like, a bunch of third-person shooter games. You had, like, Gears of War. You had cover-based shooters yeah, and, and stuff. Yeah, and let's not forget that this game was GameCube. Like, yeah. that's what it released on. Like, GameCube. it was a GameCube game. And it looked and I'm amazing. I'm pretty sure... It was pretty sure it was exclusive, right? It was. It was yeah. up until uh, I think a year afterwards, and it was on PS2 yeah. and then so on and so forth. Yeah. Right. So just like GameCube, like really, like. Yeah, I, I, I mean, <laughs> remake looked amazing on GameCube. Still oh, looks yeah. amazing on GameCube. Definitely. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember a few years back. I'm like watching, like, uh, let's plays or walkthroughs for um, Resident Evil One remake, and I'm just like, wait, I'm. <sighs> I'm sorry, this is a GameCube game and it looks like this. Like of course they still look a little plastic, but yeah. it's 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 amazing. Like it's like a what... bite sized disc and it has like so much on it. Like yes, exactly. Two discs just... and like so much graphics. Like it pushed that thing to capacity like to the top of the Absolutely. What you do. Yeah. 100 percent Like how can you how can you knock that? I don't know. I don't know how people could just knock it. Like it's nothing. Yeah, definitely. I mean that that's the thing. Like people forget that for PS4, I mean, um, for GameCube, uh, well, it's also coming to PS4 as well. It's, they're bringing it again to Xbox One and PS4. Mm -hmm. So this game will just live on forever. <laughs> uh, and justifiably so. Because I, I like, I plat I'm going to platinum it on PS4. I already played it on Steam, which is like the best version because it's, uh, it's like 60 frames, it's true HD and stuff. So oh, I got all the yeah. achievements on that. Uh, and like, I, you know, with, with something like that, I think they're trying to, because uh, because now if we like that's the thing because thinking about it from Mari Seven standpoint with every new trilogy they try to do something different because mm -hmm. you had the Raccoon City trilogy and mm -hmm. one through three and then now you had the whole bioterrorism you know yeah. four five right. and six kind of right, like you right, know right. Wesker trying to take over the world with you know global saturation and all that stuff you know <laughs> like uh, you know and, and now you got seven and it's like. What if seven is the new four? You know, like we'll never right. create four, but what if it does its own thing again? Right, exactly. You know, so like I, I and and that's that's what I'm saying. It's like people forget that that's how the, like people were kind of skeptical about four. You know, I mean, I feel like that it, people were, but you know, because mm -hmm. uh, some people still don't like four, but it's just like you know, and it's their opinion. They they like what they like, but you know, I feel like they have to they have to grasp that. Uh, idea of just trying to stay open about it you know and yeah, trying to, to be open i feel like people just get freaked out by the fact that it's like a title it's resident evil 7 and then it's so new it's so different it's just like oh my god that's not resident evil da, da, da. why not just make it like a like a, um one of the spinoffs or whatever like if they yeah. had like there was like um the umbrella umbrella chronicles and that's like obviously like it's just like a multi basically you just play that game like a multiplayer game that's it it's like yeah. a cod like that's it but 
Okay. What if it, they should just have like that name tacked on to it? Da 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 da. And it's just like okay, but like let's like try and embrace what's going on here, what they're trying to do. Like let's see what's actually happening. Like it's so yes, far away. Yeah. It's so far away. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they they have like a different idea of uh, they have a different idea of what of where they're trying to take it, and they mm-hmm. they have to they have to try to be careful because, and that's why I understand people are being cautious about it because, you know, they just don't want to see like a Resident Evil Six situation where it just didn't it just really kind of blew up in their face because they're just like, well, damn, like this people, I guess, didn't want to see this or they didn't want to see that. And then they started asking. They, they kind of did remake as a test run, like they re- remastered that for PC, PS4 and all that stuff. And they're like, all right, let's see if people buy it. And it was the top like selling game on the PS PSN store. And like it, it was selling really well. So it's like people still care about survival horror. Uh, it's yeah. not dead. You know, I, I, I don't I never believed it was dead. Um, I definitely thought it was lacking for a while, but you have games like The Evil Within, which I don't know if you played. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a great game. Uh, and Shinji Mikami did that, who created Resident Evil. So he even right. did his own line of games. So yeah. it's still alive and well, you know? Yeah, because once... It, I mean, it was definitely scary for a moment there because yeah. once... Um, I would say, like... Resident Evil 5 came out and that was like the big thing like that shooting like just action everywhere like um Left 4 Dead st- uh yeah Left 4 Dead Left 4 Dead style of like gameplay was just like the thing it was just the thing um yeah. the thing out like it was just shooters so I feel like once Resident Evil 5 came out and then of course Resident Evil 6 it was just like oh my god they're just that that's what I was feeling I was like okay they're just like following trends at this point like what's going on like where's the resident evil like where's resident evil like where's yeah evil? it kind of lost evil? its identity they called it they called it an identity crisis that's what yeah. a lot of people refer to it as and that's yeah. that's kind of that's kind of a good uh representation i don't yeah. I think that's pretty fair you know because they were like well let's do and like this is like replaying because we're you know we brought like the whole it losing its identity because like, I, when i was replaying six like recently and it's been a few years mm-hmm. um since I played it, because I had it on 360. Oh my god! Honestly, I haven't even like finished all the stories to be. Oh told. yeah, really? I, I I I just spaced it out so much because I was playing. I'm playing it, and I'm just like, oh yay! And then like I just lost interest, like mm. in just finishing it. I think I'm on like Ada's story because I went from like, um, who is it? It's Leon, and then. Chris and then Jake and then Ada. Yeah. So I think I'm on Ada's story. I'm pretty sure, which is the last one. But it's just like <laughs> he didn't it's even, like couldn't a even chore. finish it. Yeah, it's like yeah. A, kind of like a chore to play that game. Yeah, it, it's but, weird because like I I did when I did the review I did Jake's first because that's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, and the game, and then I did then I did Ada, then I did Chris. That, so mm-hmm. I I went I went in like order of the stuff I like the most. I mean, I I I think Chris is my least favorite because I, I hate mean, getting shot at. I hate it. I'm getting shot at the whole time. Like, and I realize this when I'm like playing it like again. And I'm just like, this is so annoying. Like I'm getting knocked down. The cover oh, yeah. system doesn't even work. It just doesn't seem like it works. The, yes. Here's, like, oh my God. Yes. I feel like some of the mechanics in that game were just like broken. Like the they were just system. like messed up. The health system with the capsules. And so it's like, why can't I just yes. use an earth? Why can't I use yes. an earth? Oh my god! Oh god! We can talk about that one too. Like, oh, I'm, oh yeah, definitely. that's that is like that. You know, that's what I'm saying. That's why, like, I feel like I was like, well, let me just do this review and like try to tell people how. Because like people have heard on like stuff like this, like conversations of like me kind of giving my little two cents on uh, campaigns and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But that that's why I think with like Resident Evil Six, like there was just a lot of stuff that they could have done differently, but they were trying to appeal to that action. They're like, okay, well let's yeah. make, let's make kind of Ada kind of like stealthy action. Then we have Chris that's full on action. Then we have Jake, which is action. Then we have Leon and which is like the horror, but it's like, it's not even really horror. Cause it's like, yeah, there's zombies, but it's not like, it's not really, it didn't do anything for me. No, it's not even I, like, I, you know, it wasn't scary, but yeah, go on. Yeah, I think Leon's 
was probably my least favorite story. And that was the first one that I did. So I was kind of like sitting there like at the end. I'm like, shit, is this like it? Like, is this what I'm going to be for the rest of the game? Like, really? Yeah. I thought it was just so ridiculous. I just thought that so many elements in that story were just ridiculous. I'm just like, where did this lady come from? Why are you here? I just went through like a building in a plane and i'm alive like what's <laughs> yeah. happening here oh my I'm god just so confused that was so funny like that i think the, it was just ridiculous yeah I, I i remember i listened to like it was an older podcast and it was when like it was just coming out and it was at uh these these uh two guys they played at pax and they were like talking about that they're just like what is going on like they like you go in a helicopter and then you have to like shoot this helicopter or you have to like control it while shoot it and it's like Mm-hmm. what is this like is this it's like they they playing? <laughs> yeah they really just didn't know who they're trying to appeal to and then they find figured it out pissed off people and then at that point they were just like okay uh this is like you know this is going to be this is just going to be uh something we have to just kind of try to fix and yeah. they took a few years off we had some uh in fact when i started the podcast uh, january of 2013 mm-hmm. uh that was when I call the series. I call it the dark days of the series because <laughs> there is not like there yeah. is nothing. The only thing we got that year was like Revelations port on the 360. Like that's mm-hmm. all we got. Like they like they were just quiet. And then there was rumors that like it was going to be open world uh, survival horror. And then there was like we only had speculation. So when I created the podcast, we were just we had theories and theories and theories of what they could possibly do if they would reboot it. And mm-hmm. or if they would just like scrap it. And it's like, I feel like with this, they're they're not necessarily rebooting it, but they are trying a lot of different things. And yeah, I feel like they're pulling elements from the past, pulling elements yeah. from one, two, three, the first trilogy and trying to meld it into something newer. Because don't forget, like after um, I would say after like that shooter, like apocalypse, you know, like um, craze of like the early uh 2010s i think yeah um, yeah definitely i think after that it was like um people like on youtube like pootie pie and marky plier and um uh those are the only two that i can name from the top of my head but that did like <laughs> the the um the Scare face cams, cams of oh. all like the horror games like they got really popular around like yeah. probably like 2011 2012 time so don't forget like i think they're trying to also pull that into this this first person like okay this is kind of popular now like like that's kind yeah, of I, slide it into I'm, this i'm game. happy you brought that up because some people were just like oh they're trying to like they're just doing this to like sell because they know people like that, you know, because um, there are some people that were just like they're they, uh, you know, they were pissed at it because they feel like it's going to be exposed to this kind of community. And it's like, yeah, it, it already has been like they yeah. already like people have already played right. this, have scare cammed it like it's inevitable. Mm-hmm. Like people are going to play what's popular. But it's like that's if you want to blame somebody, blame those YouTubers for existing, you know, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. don't blame Capcom because. They're doing. They're not gonna do it for somebody making a fucking video online. They, like, yeah, yeah it, it'll it will appeal to them. 100%. You know, yeah, yeah but they're like, gonna make it for these people just so they can play it. Like, no, it's. I mean, of course, it's gonna boost them some oh, course, because yeah. people are people who don't know about Resident Evil. I mean, who doesn't? But um, people who don't know are gonna yeah. be like, okay, what's this game? Like, let's go play it. Da, 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 da. Of course. Yeah. But, exactly. To create it just for that purpose, I highly doubt they have yeah, plenty like, of money. Oh, let's try to like now. sell it on the on that whole. It's like now, nah, like people are gonna Resident Evil fans are gonna buy it anyway if they're a fan of it and they want and they actually like what they see. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna avoid it because it's like it's trying to latch on to uh, a trend of yeah. any kind. Um, I mean, I feel like the whole let's play thing. Like, I'm doing let's plays longer than you know fucking PewDiePie and I don't have fucking 10 million subscribers yeah. I'll tell you that much but I definitely <laughs> like I definitely appreciate it for what it is but like I don't yeah. try to do like uh like trying I just kind of do what I want to do so like these people mm-hmm. are gonna just play these people do day one launch titles anyway mm-hmm. these people are like they get sent copies of it early because 
it's it's free it's free publicity like it's like they're yeah. like this company is like hey you're popular you're gonna sell the game kids watch you play it and we're gonna send mm -hmm. you a copy and you review it so it's like they're gonna do that anyway they already do yeah. it so it's just like you can't like whether Cap even if Capcom did like it's gonna happen anyway it's just, it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter at the end of the day mm -hmm. you know like um so I feel like like and and that's the thing because people knew the, like the this whole Slender Man and the Amnesia and Outlast yeah, yeah. they were very popular in that community and like you know yep. then you have like the girls on YouTube that like you know make show their cleavage and they're like oh look I'm a girl and I play this and uh, you know gamer I do girl. all that stuff gamer girl and like a million <laughs> subs right now and it was so funny I was talking to um, the guys about Crimson Elder and they they were saying that they had uh, they said that they had uh, like there there's Capcom had a thing where apparently they sent out or they they wanted to pick like a, Res, a Resident Evil fan and they ended up just picking this like girl who could cosplay like Jill and like it's just like you she probably doesn't even really play the whole series and because okay. and, like they you know especially them because they know so much and it's just kind of like really like you could get anybody <laughs> from this Resident Evil community to who knows more about it than her you know yeah. what I mean it's, you kind of yeah. know and like that's the thing. It's like she could have, but I just doubt it. They probably just picked her because they're like, "Oh, you got this just amount looks. of subs because of of stuff like that." So yeah. people find their niche as far as like putting on those let's plays. And like I said, mm -hmm. Resident Evil Seven will be a part of that, I'm sure, just Absolutely. like every other game. Because Resident Evil Six was probably a part of that. Resident Evil mm -hmm. Five probably wasn't because back then let's play videos were very few and far between. In 2009, they existed. Let's play existed since 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. As it's all started as screenshot let's plays on mm -hmm. something awful and then now it's on YouTube um, and so yeah I mean it, it, it really just it really is a waiting game though like I feel like we're gonna we're gonna we're definitely gonna see how uh, it plays out you know but I think <clears throat> I think as far as when we we're just talking about six I, I think like they just really divided people and it, it came to a point where they have to start they have to really start switching it up and the way that they're trying to do it and trying to stay open about it uh, and trying to just kind of test the waters and release this teaser and they they just posted a link um, probably about an hour before we got on here and they're showing all the people that reacted to it and thanking everybody for recording reaction videos and stuff like that like it's cool to get a response like they're listening they are listening yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that's what matters it's not like the game's going to change very much between now and January, because I'm sure they said it's about 65% done, mm -hmm. so they still got a little bit to go. They'll probably finish it up by fall, but yeah. you know, they they are listening, and I think you have to have a lot of uh, you have to have a, just a lot of um, of high hopes when it comes to them making the right decision, because I think at the end of the day. If you don't like first person, if it's not your thing for Resident Evil 7, then fine. Like, if you just don't like it for that reason, nobody's going to convince you otherwise. Like, if you clearly yeah. don't want to play it, right. you're just not going to play it, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I feel like with the first person thing, it's just, um, they're introducing um, new characters, for one. They're like, I mean, they're saying that, Basically, you're going to be playing a totally new character, yep, yep. which is totally, it, this is like, oh my god, like, this isn't happening, like, we've been playing a Chris, uh, Jill, um, Leon for, like, the past, like, 15, 20 years, like, yep. what are you doing? But, I mean, if you're introducing new characters, you got to also think differently, too. Like, are these characters going to be moving? Like, regular everyday characters are going to be moving the same way that a Leon, that a Chris, that a Jake is going to be moving? No, not really, because you have Leon, Chris, and Jake that were, like, born into that mess. They yeah. were just, like, they were molded by it, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Their whole careers are defined by it, tragedy. Like. Exactly. They were they were just molded by this this apocalyptic all of this so they turned into like crazy action superheroes like of course but a regular everyday person like you have to think of it as that way like we're we're playing like a normal human being from for the most part i guess maybe but yeah as far as we know <laughs> as far as we know but are they going to do we have the same control like if we had the same controls that we did like from behind the back would it have the same um vibe would have the same feeling would you feel the yeah. same things as a normal person that's true rather than playing like um 
you know, uh, molded by the darkness, Leon. Like, come on. Like, yeah, really? that, that, that's true. That, that is that's an interesting point because it's like we're we're not only getting this new face, but we're also getting this new dynamic as far as perspective. Like mm-hmm. we're getting different things. So yeah, that's a good point because people at the end of the day. Um, cause I heard, you know, people were just like, look, if you, and I, and I thought this was pretty cool too. Like they're just like, look, like if you want to like, you know, uh, if you want to play the other characters, there's still going to be the revelation series. Like there's rumors mm-hmm. that revelation three will have Jill, which mm-hmm. I'm all for like, I'll, if she comes back and it's like Jill after post Resident Evil five, cause the only thing we got in to hear from her from after RE five was like a letter she wrote to Barry and revelations too. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Oh, I got like, you know, my, my hair color back and I'm feeling a lot better. I'm still like recovering covering a bit or whatever the hell. And, um, and the, so that's a good point where it's like, I feel like they're still going to use these characters, just not in, uh, the same way. Uh, right. I feel like people are going to, uh, people are going to form, uh, you know, their own opinions on the characters and stuff like that. But I think with the whole new concept can come new characters. And if mm-hmm. there's, cameos from other characters sure like i'm all for that you know like yeah. if, if that's I mean, you know i'm sad i can't play my leon anymore but like oh, yeah. come on let's let's try something different guys yeah there you go <laughs> leon's leon's just you know leon's gonna be in the animated film too so we'll we'll see yep. him and what he's up to and uh yeah, these characters are getting old they are oh and yeah like aging. when you really think about it like yeah okay so leon was like i think he was like 20 in like resident evil 2 he was like I think nineteen, like, something around there. He was probably mid twenties, probably. He was like a younger kid, yeah, I think so. Like first day on the job, and I think I want to know if like there's actually I'm about to look it up to see like how old if they, if they have like age because I know Jill. They, and, they have to. They have to. They definitely do. Like even if you just Wikipedia like Resident Evil two, you'll you should be able to see it. Yeah, I'm at the. Oh, uh, he was young. twenty one and two. Twenty one. There you go. Wow, see so you're you're you were closer than me. Okay. I knew it. I know. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. I can run this podcast by myself. Oh, you, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll send it to you and you can edit everything. You got this. Okay, never mind. No, <laughs> but, um, no but, you know, he, he was tw- 21 and like 1990, what was it, like 7, 98 or something like that? That was 98, yes. 98. So like... They take place in real time. Come on. So yeah. that means in 6, if that took place in... that, Well, that was like 2013. Let's add another 20 years to right now. To, yeah. to when it's set i think it's well from the videos um it's set uh the videos inside of the, the demo were 2017 yeah so so that's 20 years after you know raccoon city so boom leon's already like 41 years old like come on like he needs yeah. a break like, yeah he needs like that. A he, needs, he definitely does and he's he's seen so much of bioterrorism or any kind of uh any kind of web, like mm-hmm. any kind of uh, bio te- bio ter- uh, terrorism weapons, and like yep, BOWs, everything. and like it's like um, you know. it, it it's like people like, and that's the thing. I always knew that eventually we would see something new, like we would see mm-hmm. these characters. Like same thing with Jill. Like she's Jill and Chris are, are they're all forty at this point, and yeah. it's like they form the BSAA together, Jill and Chris. So it's mm-hmm. like now, yeah. you know, it's like maybe they're just doing their own thing. Maybe they're just uh, focusing on um, other acts of kind of terrorism that, ha- yeah. that doesn't have and, anything to do with this, you know. And speaking of that, um, Resident Evil Six, I think um, so far Chris's story was actually my favorite. <laughs> it was your oh, least okay. favorite, but I think it was my favorite because I felt like it was a little more um, emotion driven, which I like that. That's true. That's, that's was, very true. Like by honestly, the end of his story, I was in tears. To be honest, like oh, to wow. be totally honest, like if. I'm just going to be, you know, a little girl about it. I was in tears. Like, I was really upset. I just felt the emotion the whole time because I'm, like, we have this image of Chris that he's, like, this big, burly guy in Resident Evil 5. Like, nothing can (laughs) phase him. Like, he, the beard, like, everything. And then in Resident Evil 6, he's, like, this uh, depressed, like, drunk. And it's just, like, oh, my God. Like, what happened to you? Like, you're, like, supposed to be, like, a superhero. Like, what is going on? So, yeah, that was driven by most of his teammates and stuff. Yeah. Right. So that and Resident Evil 6. And um, so so that just shows, like, just the transition from Resident Evil 5 to Resident Evil 6. It's, like, they, you know, they have their own, like, 
stories behind the scenes, basically. Like, Resident Evil 7, they could be not even, like, around or into it anymore. Like, we don't know. Yeah, that's they true. They have their own thing. That's true, and, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. See, the thing is with 6, Jake and Cher, the reason why Jake and Cher was my favorite was because I love their chemistry. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed their cutscenes. Every time there was a cutscene, it was my favorite. The thing is with, um, and I and I appreciated that how they handled um, uh, Jake and Sherry. Now Jake as a character, they could have handled him a little bit better. Could have ri- like written his character better. But um, with with how uh, with how I portray um, like Chris's campaign in R six. It's it's mostly uh, gameplay of why I don't like it as much. Um, yeah, story, yeah, I, okay, I, yeah. I, Piers was like okay, uh, he didn't do too much for me. Uh, but I think what bothered me is because Chris and Joe are like my favorite characters. Um, yeah. But what yeah, bothered me so is like where where like I understand Jill was probably still recovering, but like keep in mind like if RE5 took place 2009 and this is a few years after that, like. How does Jill let her partner sink that low into yeah. like depression okay. and kind of being by himself? Yeah, I can see. Right. Yeah, so like that yeah. was like my thing. But I mean, I understand like how if, if you like, you know, like that's your favorite, that's fine. A lot of people do like Chris's story. And what kept mm-hmm. me involved in Chris's story was the fact that I was Chris because I could care about his character. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like how you do and stuff like that. So it's like that's what drove me to uh, to actually uh, – play it and make it like bearable to play you know disregarding the the crappy gameplay mechanics which distracts from the story i think sometimes 100%. um and uh but no like yeah i mean like i mean there it's the and who knows this could be a more emotional roller coaster of a game too like they can make it to, i mean because like look at games like the last of us which i cry like a bitch every time i play that game i, I do oh, yeah. like mm-hmm. that game and i don't know if you played it but, I've never played it because, uh, again, I come back to the fact that I've never owned a PlayStation. I will, I will, you, but I, I never have. But I've seen people play it, and I've seen, you know, videos. What do you have, Xbox now? Um, I have 360. Um, <clears throat> uh, no <laughs> Xbox One, but uh, I was uh, I was so sad on, like, getting Xbox One um, at least, like, a year after it came out because I just, I just didn't have the money for it. So They are expensive. Like, oh, like, a year, maybe two after I'll get Xbox One, and then... All this stuff for E3 came yeah, out. You, and you like, waited. You're the smart one. I'm the one who had to like, go out and buy the shit. And they're like, oh, here's the super extra deluxe version of a PS4 that comes with 4K. And it's yeah. like, wow. Yeah, so now I'm like, okay, I think PS4. I'm, I think I'm leaning towards PS4. I, I really am. But anyway, Last of Us. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Last of Us was a, was a game where um, – and, and there was an article that came out that said that they were taking – back. this is back in like – uh, summer 2013 when I did a podcast and it was right around when I built my computer and like and I was talking to um I was talking to my friend Perry about it and he he uh he was like you know we were reading it and he was saying like yeah they are taking influence from like little little bit of last of us because even with revelations 2 mm-hmm. they had some crafting in there they had some like item scavenging so they had mm-hmm. some it had definitely had an influence and uh I think it worked, and um, you know, and and that was also talking about Resident Evil Seven when they were like, "Oh, we're looking at games like uh, like Tomb Raider and Last of Us as far as like scavenging and survival elements." And I always yeah. thought that that was I was gung ho about it because I was like, "Oh shit!" I mean, Tomb Raider was great, the reboot was great. Tomb uh, Raider's beautiful. That's another podcast too because I'm a huge Tomb Raider fan. Oh yeah, Tomb, <laughs> yeah. Tomb, Raider, Tomb Raider's awesome. Uh, I I want to play the new one, like the newest one. Uh, uh, the get, rise rise yeah yeah um i can get it on pc because it comes out on ps4 like in the fall but mm-hmm. i don't want to wait that long or no i think it's like mm-hmm. next january or something and i'm like i kind of oh. just want to play it on pc because mm-hmm. it's like a microsoft exclusive for now so uh, mm-hmm. and those were games that i also watched my dad play on ps1 he had like one two three Re- oh, yeah. Revel- last revelation chronicles and all that stuff mm-hmm. um but uh that, yeah, that's the thing. Like, they took a lot of influence from that, and uh, Last of Us was so story driven. So that's oh, why yeah, I think um, I'm really hoping that this is something like that because Resident Evil has never been so much of a serious, uh, serious story. Like, it's a little far fetched. I mean, yeah, you have this basically. like umbrella corporation, then you got like you know Wesker who's like pulling strings. It's just like it's a little like it's great, but it's still kind of like B movie ish, as like me and me and my buddy Richard used you know say. It's like 
it's very B movie esque, where it is like it's a little over the top all the time. Yeah. Uh, uh, like less in less, you know, less like that in the uh, original games, but it's still like it's still pretty like you know just out there a bit. Where uh, you know now it's like they could strip that back and just make it completely like just dark and and maybe like yeah. maybe we love this new character. Maybe he's like he or she we don't even know we don't it could yeah. be a female new character i mean mm-hmm. they've done it you know Cap- capcom's known for its female uh main characters so it's like yep. I-, I would love to see what they can do so mm-hmm. the possibilities are endless so i mean uh before we wrap this up final thoughts on re7 what are you so you're looking forward to it you know you have anything else to say about it yeah i'm definitely looking definitely looking forward to re7 i mean i think with what they've shown us it's definitely a new approach to Resident Evil, but I feel like um, this could be something, like we said already, it could be start the start of like a new trilogy, and it could be really amazing. I think it has the p- potential to be just like like another like whoa. This I like is an RE four, an RE four, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It has the potential to be that, and I think with what they've shown us so far, I um, I'm definitely excited for it, 100. percent all right, awesome. That's good to hear. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Of course. And uh, and yeah, everybody out there listening, um, yeah, just stay tuned for more stuff. Uh, they they also came out, and I'll, I'll throw this in there. They uh, Capcom said that they do have another that another game on board. Like I said, it could be Revelations three, uh, mm-hmm. but they they didn't announce anything yet. So I'll keep everybody posted on that. But yep. uh, but all right, so that's that for the show, and I'll catch you guys next time. Resident Evil, more terrifying than ever, comes to Nintendo GameCube. Spine-chilling action. Devastating weapons. Unspeakable evil. Live the nightmare. Resident Evil, exclusively from Capcom. Rated M for Mature, only on Nintendo GameCube.